I'd like to start really by just uh, telling the story of the, the CEO from a very well-known um, multinational corporation who was asked how many people worked for his company. And he said, about half of them. Um, and actually, he was probably being a bit over generous because it, there are about three billion people uh, who are employed around the world. Um, and out of those three billion, there's a measly 13% who would say that they were engaged in the work. The bigger question is, why isn't work working now for people? How can we uh, collaboratively produce things? Because I think what we've seen is we've shared what we knew, we shared what we owned, you know, through the, the sharing economy, Airbnb, all of that stuff. Now we're moving into what I think is the fascinating phase, which is that we're sharing what we create and and we're now doing that through the coronavirus at scale. So having open structures is really critical to collaboration. The freedom to fail is critical too. So if you look at a company like 3M, one of the most innovative companies in the world with thousands of product lines, it has 50% of its inventions never make it to market. So it has a failure rate of 50%. Now I ask you, how many companies would be content with the failure rate of, of that kind of magnitude? The theory behind Google culture is that you're growing, the, 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 you're feeding the, 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 the growing medium from below. And you, you don't have to be constantly putting fertilizer on. Now, I'm going to go back in because the, 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 I haven't completely lost my senses. The, the kind of connection with that is I looked at organizations and what I see are the old fashioned kinds of, um, of raised beds. I see CEOs who are the sole, and whether that's a principal of a school or a CEO of a company, who are the sole ideas repository, and they spend all their time running around trying to stimulate innovation. Now, inside that, the Google culture stuff is the, the bit that I've got, which is essentially the values that I see in, in these really highly innovative organizations, and I, I visited about 15 of them. So they, they are the enabling conditions, but the growing medium the stuff that benefits as a result are these eight areas. So these organizations were scored highly on all eight of these things. And the point I'm trying to make in the book is you can't teach people to be ingenious, but you don't need to. All you need to do is to create the right culture. And then the final one, which is one that everything else depends upon, really, is trust. And I think this is the one that companies have the hardest job with. And it's the absence of trust, it seems to me, that's the root cause of most dysfunctional working cultures. When the best place to work do their survey and they ask people what are the key uh, criteria that they're using in, in choosing to work for a company, it's not pay, it's not perks, it's not working hours. It's whether they're trusted as employees. So it's absolutely critical to creating that kind of learning environment. Saying we'll look back on, on history and there'll be a period before Corona and a period after Corona. So right now it's really hard to to see what's going to happen, but but it will, I believe, be the most significant thing in a century. How we put the world back together again after all of this is, is you know, the billion dollar question because everything is changing at, at lightning speed. And um, you mentioned uh, my last book. Uh, I've, I thought I'd finished writing my next book, which is um, called We'll Figure It Out, <laughs> uh, Mass Ingenuity and the Power of Us. And... I, it's been sent off to the publisher and yeah. I just feel like I'm live blogging now because mm -hmm. every hour there's another example of, of, of some incredible act of ingenuity.